welcome to Beyond the Trailer's coverage of the 2013 Academy Awards, giving you an in-depth look at the top categories. And be sure to cast your own vote for who you think should win in our poll at tinyurl.com slash BTT Oscar vote 2013. There's even a write-in section. Now let's take a look at the nominees for Best Actor. Bradley Cooper, Silver Linings Playbook. Who'd ever guess that the cute one in The Hangover would be nominated for a Best Actor Oscar? Probably no one, which is why Cooper wasn't David O. Russell's first choice for the role. He had originally intended to cast Vince Vaughn, but made the fighter instead, then planned to reteam with Mark Wahlberg yet again for Silver Linings. But when those options fell through, Russell turned to Cooper, whose previous work as a professional jerk had impressed him. Would Cooper care to take that which he had perfected to the next level? Cooper was indeed game, and even came onto the film as an executive producer, only the second time he's ever produced after Limitless. But while Harvey was able to get Cooper a nomination, a win might be just too difficult to pull off, especially since this is Cooper's first time at the adults' table. And with a Cameron Crowe flick and another David O. Russell flick in the works, Cooper has clearly turned a corner and will be back again. Daniel Day-Lewis, Lincoln. Once again, as in many categories this year, it's Lincoln versus Les Mis. Both Daniel Day-Lewis and Hugh Jackman took home Golden Globes, but only one can walk away with the Oscar. First up, the case for Day-Lewis. Sure, he's done an amazing job once more. This is his fifth nomination, would be his third win. But what's truly impressive here is that he's redefined Abraham Lincoln. Gone is the image etched in textbooks and Disney theme parks, replaced by one that Day-Lewis crafted over the course of a year. And that voice. When many of us first heard it, myself included, we had a knee-jerk negative reaction as it differed so much from the one has been so long associated with the 16th president. But by studying personal accounts as well as the dialect of the area Lincoln hailed from, Day-Lewis literally gave Lincoln back his voice, one that has never been heard as there was no way to record it at the time. And he's not even American. While we're often impressed with British actors flawlessly delivering an American accent, this kind of regional and historical accuracy sets a new threshold. Hugh Jackman, Les Miserables. But again, Day-Lewis already has two Oscars. Hugh Jackman, none. Plus, he does have a strong relationship with the Academy, successfully hosting the telecast back in 2009. He got the gig after hosting the Tonys three times, highlighting his love and dedication to musical theater. Jackman has such love and dedication to musical theater that some could argue he's put his movie career in jeopardy, as his turn in The Boy from Oz doesn't exactly mesh with his image as Wolverine. In fact, he doesn't have much of a movie career outside of Wolverine because he's dedicated all his efforts to that franchise alone and the theater. So as he tries to meld the two together with Les Mis, it's very possible that voters will want to reward the dedication and risk of what is basically the culmination of Jackman's career to date. And sing acting on set is really hard and never been done before. Joaquin Phoenix, The Master. Oh yeah, The Master. Remember when everyone considered this to be a lock for nominations across the board? But at the end of the day, Harvey Weinstein could only secure nominations for his three key actors, chief of which is Phoenix. However, when he was riding high earlier this year, Phoenix publicly called the Oscars bullshit in Interview Magazine, hardly the kind of Oscar campaigning Harvey had in mind. Did voters forget or just decide to cruelly nominate him so he'd be forced to sit through the bullshit without winning? Or maybe they've just decided that Phoenix is an artiste and this kind of rambling is a side effect of his brilliance. Phoenix is indeed a fantastic actor and could have been a Daniel Day-Lewis if not for his unwillingness to play the Hollywood game. You could say it all worked out as here they are in the same category, but only one has a real shot at winning, and it's not Phoenix. But like Naomi Watts, who is also unlikely to win, he has another strong contender in the works, Spike Jonze's sci-fi romance, Her, where he'll star opposite fellow Oscar nominees Amy Adams, Rooney Mara, and Samantha Morton. Denzel Washington, Flight. Flight has just two nominations, this one in Best Original Screenplay. And considering that John Gattins is such a strong frontrunner, it's unlikely Denzel Washington will also pull out a win. But hey, this is Washington's sixth nomination, more than Daniel Day-Lewis. But while Daniel Day-Lewis' Lincoln is something new for the actor, Washington has already showed his dark side twice before and won the Oscar both times. With that in mind, it's odd that voters would go for someone who has no real chance of winning instead of giving a dark horse contender like John Hawks in The Sessions, Jack Black and Bernie, Jamie Foxx and Django Unchained, or even Logan Lerman in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a shot. And those are the 2013 Best Actor nominees. Who do you think deserves the Oscar? Leave your comments down below, and don't forget to vote in the Beyond the Trailer Oscar poll. It closes on February 12th. I'm Grace Randolph, and I hope you'll check out the rest of BTT's Oscar coverage. 